Hello guys and welcome to a new Star Division 2 video today by me Falcon. In this one I have for you a preview of the second Panzer Division, a new division available in the upcoming Tribute to Normandy 44 DLC. As a disclaimer, Eugen has given me free access to the DLC so a big thanks to them. Also please remember that this was recorded on a preview build so what you see may be subject to change. If you'd like to read the description on the right hand side feel free to pause the video and take a look but let's jump straight on in. Today I'll be looking through all of the units available and then we'll build a quick deck. So let's start in the recon tab. We of course have the BMW motorcycle. Now one thing that you may notice <laughs> with the motorcycle is it is two vet. Now every unit in the second panzer basically gets free veterancy um, which makes them incredibly efficient availability wise and allows you to push a lot of units to to veterancy without sacrificing much which is really nice so pretty strong division just based on that but let's go through all of these units this one is the Alftada and it has Kubels, Finnwagen you got the 251 uh, there is no um, 222s available which is probably a blessing for other people you're playing against because otherwise you'd have like two vet 20 mil vehicles out of the wazoo which you still kind of do if you want to Spätrup available three six and nine force two vet kubel and 251 as the notable transports then we have the 258 which is a 75 mil half track five available in a one vet or four at two vet there's the 259 which is one of the candidates for the two vet 20 mils six available in a 12 in b and 18 in c now one thing to note is that in the new patch that's coming along with this uh, dlc all back is going to be nerfed so you take more damage while falling back now than you used to and so 20 mil auto cannons are going to be even more effective than they already are because of that, which is going to be pretty scary. But uh, I don't believe it's like crazy overpowered. It just kind of punishes you for being careless. Um, but anyway, SBW 231, four available in A at two vet. SBW 233, six available in A at one vet, four available at two vet. The SBW 234 to Puma. These are available six in A at one vet and five in A at two vet. Now this is actually a really good vehicle. Um, we have already got Pumas in the game, but they've changed it so that these now get APCR. Um, this isn't unique to this division. Every Puma now has APCR, I believe. And that's going to make them particularly strong against heavier armor now. Um, you can kind of overwhelm heavier armor with these. So 150 millimeters of penetration, you're only doing three damage. So you've got to remember that your like a heavy tank has 12 health. So you need to hit and penetrate four times in order to kill a heavy tank with these. For a medium tank, you need to still penetrate four times. So yeah, while you have the APCR, it's uh, still going to be difficult to deal uh, with sort of strong medium armor. You do still have the AP shell that does six damage, but yeah, just make sure you remember to turn off your APCR if you're engaging things with less than 100 millimeters of armor. Uh, but yeah, otherwise, Puma, pretty nice unit to have in this division. It's going to be very strong early on. Panzer fours, the recon Panzer fours are available. Eight available in B at one vet. And then we have the Alpha Panther D, which is available in B and C. Again, free veterancy on these. Pretty nasty. Moving into the infantry tab. The infantry tab here, pretty plain for a for a panzer division. I mean, it's it's kind of pretty standard for any German division, honestly. You got your Pioneer Führer with your HE grenade. They come in at two vet though. Panzergrenfuhrer with the Panzerfaust coming at two vet. Three available in A. Sturm Pioneers available in A and B. Free to vet basically. Um, five MP40s, Flammenwerfer, smoke grenade. Do have shock trait as well. Pioneers, again, free veterancy. So you get five, 10, and 15 available, but at one vet, which is really, really nice. 
And they can be brought in with half tracks. I think the Stern Pioneer can as well. Yep. Uh, let's just have a quick look at transports for these guys. Uh, they do have the access to the 250-117D, which is a 20 mil like anti-air vehicle. And then they also have the Panzerbuchse version of the STK FZ 251.7. Um, so both of these leaders do get access to those. Uh, this one actually gets access to the SDK FZ 251.9 as well, which has that 75 mil gun on it. Uh, then we have the Panzergrenfuhrer. Does this one get a different one? No, this gets both the SDK FZ 251.17D and the 251.9. This one is really nice because the machine gun is facing forwards, it's not on the back, so it can fire its machine gun at the same time it's firing its main gun. It can put down a lot of fire support very quickly indeed. And at 2VET, that's actually going to be pretty scary because the rate of fire on this will go up to 16 rounds per minute, which is a lot. Uh, then we have a card of Volksdeutsche available, which are double MG34 infantry. Um, they are, again, receiving one free VET, available in A and B. And then we have Panzergrenz, available in A, B and C, again receiving free of that, making them very scary. Can be brought in with half-tracks, of course. And the um, Panzergren with Panzerfaust. Now the free vet on these is even more scary than the free vet on the Panzergrenadiers because you don't, usually you would always like one vet, the Panzergrenz with Panzerfaust, because their vet curve is a lot sort of a lot less harsh than it is with the standard pen, Panzergren card. Like you'd go normally from, you go from eight to six rather than nine to six. And so generally it paid to up vet these. But now you're doing that anyway. So you're gonna get them free to vet, which is, yeah, <laughs> it's gonna be nasty. Um, in the tank tab, let's have a look. We have Panzer 4Js available in B and C, 12 and 24 availability. Pans 4Hs again in B. Um, you've got the 10 and 15 availability. Um, the Pans 4H available in B and C. Stugs available in B. Um, Stug 3 G Führer available in B. Panther A available in B and C. Again, receiving two vet or um, free vet. So the vet curve on these <laughs> means you're going to have like two Panthers in phase B with two vet. Um, same with the leader. The leader gets that veterancy. And then the Panther G as well. Also, B and C, free vet. <laughs> it makes these really, really scary. Especially in phase B. Because like, this is like super, super efficient card. <laughs> Ridiculous. But you might have noticed how none of these tanks can come in phase A. That is one thing that is unique about this division. Um, and was the case in... So Division Normandy 44, where you had like all of your light armor and stuff that you could use to assist you in phase A. And then in phase B and C, that's when things actually got um, even worse for your opponent. Um, for the support tab, there is the Felgen Darmory, again with free veterancy, A, B and C. Flammenwerfer, A and B. Uh, no crazy transports for them. You can't get access to the Flammenpanzer uh, 251 16, uh, which is going to be really nice in phase A, and the rate of fire on the flamethrower is going to make them pin down things even faster. There are three cards of Borgvards available in B and C, so I mean, that's got to be a video at some point, surely. <laughs> that is 36 Borgvards. I don't know how I'd make that work, because Borgvards are totally trash and they blow each other up, but yeah, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. IG-18 is available in A, B, and C, and then MG42s. There's three cards of these available, and they get free vets. So you're getting four on a card at two veterancy. Yeah, very nasty. Can actually be brought in with the 251.17Ds. Now, bear in mind there's only four of these available, so if you're bringing them in with your leaders, you're not going to be getting them anywhere else. Uh, then there's three cards of Opal Blitz is available. The IG-18 is available in this division as well. Um, three in A. 6 in B. Usually you wouldn't upvet these, but honestly in phase A I'd be tempted uh, <laughs> since you can get them up to 2 vet because uh, that way you can push the rate of fire up to 6 rounds per minute, which 
which I guess isn't like a huge increase, so maybe not worth it. Um, eight available in B and twelve in C for the Greeler. Commandant as a leader. Ramsh as a ace commander. And then we have the Panther A as a commander. All right, moving on to the anti tank tab. Panstrek. Only one card of Panstreks. You will want to bring these in. You just got to be choosing exactly when you want to bring them in. Um, and then there's the Pack 40, which is available in A, B, and C. Free bet on Pack 40s. <laughs> I mean I don't I don't know how many times I've said it, but it's nasty. <laughs> Alright, this is this is a nasty division. <laughs> uh, then we have Yagpanzer Fours available in B and C. I believe these have slightly less armor than their other counterparts. Um the standard Jagdpanzer Four. But uh yeah. Still 145 mils of penetration and 110 mils of frontal armor is still relatively good. But look at that veterancy. <laughs> Alright, anti air tab. So we have the flag 38 20 mils. Um, since these get free vet, it means you can bring them in at 2 vet. And in this case, you can also bring them in with the STK of Z104. So you're going to get 4 20 mil, um, 20 mil flag 38s with the STK of Z104, which also come in at 2 vet. So that's going to be a really nice combination, especially in the early game. Um, then you got the Gepards available in B and C at 2 vet. The Flag 37, um, which comes in A, B and C, 2, 4 and 6 availability as usual. Can be brought in with a multi munition truck if you want to, but generally wouldn't recommend it. And then the SDK of Z71, which also receives very free veterancy. Which is really nasty for a flag filling, I'll tell you that much. Nasty, nasty, nasty. That's all it is. Okay, Bearbachter. Um, these can't really come in with any exciting transports uh, other than maybe the half track, but this isn't even the recon half track, so maybe not. Uh, but yeah, three available in A, six in B. Uh, Battery Führer, two, four, and six available, coming at two vet. Then we got the 81mm mortars. 4, 8, 12 availability, and the LEFH 105, which comes in at 3, 6, and 9 availability. These are kind of trash because of the low rate of fire. Um, same with the Vespa, which comes in in phase B, 4 available, and phase C with 6 available. Then there's the SK 105, which really does benefit from the extra veteran C to push up his rate of fire. So 2 available in A and 4 available in B, but only one card of these, unfortunately. Um, then there's a card of 81mm mortars, um, the half-track mortar, and the um, second half-track mortar, which comes with more ammunition. So this one costs 90 points, and then this one costs uh, 105 points. And basically what you're paying for is extra ammunition on both the HE and smoke, and also an MG to defend itself. That's pretty much the difference there. Then we have the 150 mils available. 1, 2, and 4 availability, and the Hummel, 2 and 3 availability. I always like the Hummel, but in this game it's it's kind of underwhelming. Um, you might as well just be using the SFH 150 uh, because it gets more rate of fire. Although I guess this is harder to counter battery if you're lazy. Moving on to the air tab. Um, actually, I should say if you're not lazy. If you want to use the Hummel. <laughs> uh, but yeah, FI156, classic recon plane, 15.6 available in A, 9 available in B. The JU88s, 2, 4, and 8 availability. Then the JU88 um, strafer. This thing is actually pretty nasty because it's got the four ventral 20 mils, and these are very good at uh, deleting ground forces particularly like support weapons and stuff. Then you've got the Focke-Wulf 190 F8, which has the 220mm to 13mm. This is the medium resilience variant because it's an F8. So 3, 6 and 9 availability. You can see that the aircraft don't get the free one vet because they weren't part of the ground forces, which do have the actual veterancy. 
Then we have the Focke Wolf 190G1s with the 500 kilogram bombs, so one in A, two in B, and four in C. The Focke Wolf 190G3 with the R uh, R5, which is the one 250 kilogram bomb, four 50 kilogram bombs, two available in A, four in B, and eight in C. Both of these, you'll notice, have bad resilience as opposed to the F8's medium resilience. So do bear that in mind. Um, J88, four 250 kilogram bombs, and 28 50 kilogram bombs is the payload. One available in A, two available in B and for available in C. And that is your lot. So yeah, overall, this division, very potent uh, with its veterancy. So let's see what we can put together. In phase A, I think we just do double Puma because you don't have any tanks. So the Pumas are gonna basically be your makeshift tanks for phase A. You will wanna bring in 20 mil vehicles, and these 20 mil vehicles are very good. Um, I might actually go and put that in phase A and then put these in phase B. Otherwise, you might want to bring in a card of recon infantry. I don't know if I want to do this in phase A or phase B. Probably phase B, just to make sure you have some to dot around. Having recon infantry is really important because it can stay hidden. And in this case, they have kind of exceptional stealth. And they don't accidentally reveal themselves if you forget to turn off their weapons. Um, the Afghan D is also a potential here, but I think this is a good phase A. There is an argument to be made to make these two vet for sure. We'll do that with the Pumas. That puts them up to 10 round per minute rate of fire. Okay, infantry tab. This one's going to be difficult because it's quite expensive tab. Last card's four points. I don't know if I want to put a, a leader in here. Can't really substitute a leader in the support tab. We can substitute leaders in the artillery tab. Um, maybe we put one leader in. I'm going to put these guys in. Yeah, with that 20 mil vehicle, I think. Or it might actually be better to use the 2519. I think that's actually a better choice. Maybe quite expensive for phase A, but that's okay. Uh, then we'll do Fork Socha, uh, we'll do Panzergrounds, and some Pioneers. Uh, this is kind of where you have to do this because of availability. Actually, no, it'd be better to do it this way around. Them like that, and then we'll do Stern Pyres in phase A, normal Pyres in phase B with the Panzerfaust ones, and then phase C. We'll just do something like this. That will do. All right, uh, we're definitely bringing in pad threes in phase B. Good availability on those. Phase C and B, pad the Gs. Not sure if I want to bring in Panzer fours. We could bring in some Panzer fours at two vet. It's either that or Stugs. I think Panzer fours are probably easier to manage. Yeah, and then two of that, and then something like this. Hmm. I don't know if I need this many Panthers. It might be better off me having more Panthers of fours. Hmm. Not sure. Let's just go ahead and put a Lamsh in there as our commander, of course. Phase B could either. Uh, definitely phase A IG, uh, which transports faster. This one is. So we'll bring that in, 
Uh, we'll bring in some of these and I probably want to bring in some MGs, but I'm going to come back to this because I need to bring in supply as well. Probably going to use up these two, two slots. For Panzer Shreks, I think we do bring them in phase A. And then we'll need a phase A card of pack 40s. I don't think the Jagdpanzers are worth bringing. But I kind of want to put them in to try them out. So it looks something like that. Can I not bring them in with uh, Opal Blitz? No, we've already we've actually run out of Opal Blitz. Okay, interesting. Okay, let's go ahead and use the SDKZ 10-4s. Uh, we'll definitely bring in 7-1s. And phase C will be 88s. Artillery. Hmm. I'm not sure quite what to do here. They're probably going to be radio mortars. Something like this. And then these guys is counter battery. And battery fuda. And then in the air tab. Card of Fock Wolves as AA. Maybe a card of bombers. I think that is fine. Yeah, I think I think overall this looks fine, other than the fact that I don't have the uh, supply in here yet. So we've got to figure out how we're going to do that. There's nothing I really want to take away here. Like I might just have to drop those. We pop in supply here. I don't know if this will be enough supply, but I can bring these in with the Mortiers, so we can do that. It will make them quite expensive, but I think it's worth doing. And that's no MGs either. I think you, there, there's an argument to be made that you'd use MGs maybe instead of the Flampanzer. Uh, maybe MGs aren't needed though, because you've got a lot of 20mm vehicles. You've got like the long range fire support. Yeah. When you look at this division as a whole, it is gross. So much free veterancy all over the place. All of this stuff is like two vet. Yeah, this is going to be a pretty decent division. I think it will struggle still in like 1v1 scenarios. Me and Sackpo are having a little discussion about this, where because it relies a lot on armor and doesn't have like much infantry, like yes, it's got high veterancy infantry, but it's nothing compared to like close range um, specialized infantry. So the infantry tab will still suffer against, you know, really strong divisions like the SSB and the Airborne Task Force and stuff like that. So it will be a strong division. It just depends how oppressive I think 20 mils become because there's a lot of potential in this uh, recon tab to make things spicy in 1v1. But uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Overall, second Panzer, very strong division. Uh, probably one of the strongest divisions in this DLC, if not the strongest. So let me know what you think about the second Panzer in the comments, of course. But that's it for me for now. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.